here again at your service with another, well, we hope to be wonderful math video. Yes, I will do my best. I promise. I'll work really hard. That's right, because I'm working for you. That's right. My awesome fifth grade students out there, you math wizards, welcome aboard. What are we doing today, Mr. Wara? Hey, great question. We're looking at lesson 1.7. Woohoo! Yes, and what's our topic? Well, it looks like we're going to multiply by two digit numbers now. Whoa, dude, didn't we just do like one digit numbers the other day? Uh, yeah, we did. Wow, we're just moving on to like two digit numbers? That was fast. I bet not as fast as this tiger over here. Look at this guy. Whoa, dude, look at that guy pounce. Wow, I always picture seeing tigers, you know, up kind of like in the, uh, I don't know, like the forest area hunting tonight, but this guy here is doing something pretty. He must be moving in on something there. All right. Hey, good to have you aboard, my friend. I bet that tiger is going to have something to do with our problem. Now, what's our essential question? This is our purpose, our learning target. This is what's important because this is what is guiding us and what our outcome should be. What we should learn today is how do you multiply by two-digit numbers? And you know we're going to do that. But you know, we can't do it yet. No, we can unless we unlock the problem. That's right, my friends, because this is real world, baby. Real world. Real world. Now, it says a tiger can eat as much as 40 pounds of food at a time, but it may go for several days without eating anything. Whoa. Suppose a Siberian tiger in the wild eats an average of 18 pounds of food per day. How much food will the tiger eat in 28 days if he eats that amount each day? But we want to know how much food will the tiger eat in 28 days? That's right. That means multiplication. Use place value and regrouping. Exactly what we did on our previous lesson. Let's take a look at step one. Now step one says estimate. Yeah, that's what we did the last time. And look how we're going to estimate this time. See, 28 is a number that's only in the tens place. So that would mean then we'd want to round it to probably the nearest tens. And look, they have 30. Perfect. And then we also have 18. It's a number that's in the tens place, so we're going to round it to 20. That's just like rounding, kind of like what the estimate is. Estimating is like getting us a number that's close to where we want to be, but it's not exact. And that's what an estimate is. So we take our simple facts again, 3 times 2, 6. We have 2 powers of 10, so I put my 2 powers of 10. I always say that because I want you guys to remember that 10 raised to the second power means 10 times 10, and that's what we have. We have 2 powers of 10 there. So our estimate is going to be 600. So our answer should be right around, that's right, 600. Now let's look at step 2, multiply by the 1s. So far when I think about what we did the last time and this time, we're doing exactly the same thing. So here we're going to say, well, then 8 times 8 then is 64. We're going to put our 4 up here because we need to carry our 6 into the tens place. So now that we've carried the 6 over, now we go ahead and we're going to multiply that 8 ones with the 2 tens there, and there's 6 tens up above that. So that's going to be 16 plus another 6 is going to give us 22. 22 tens. Or in this case, because we have a blank here, it says 28 times 8. Well, this is a partial product here, so that's going to come right here, and we're going to say that's 224 ones, because this 8 is in the ones place. And so we were multiplying the ones place value with 8, well, actually 28. That's what we just did. And this is our partial product of 224. Okay, let's move to step 3. Step 3 says multiply by the tens. Aha, uh -huh. so I see here, we're going to go ahead and put in our 224 ones that we had. But now when we come down to the tens place, we need to put in a zero, okay? Because we want to make sure that our digits are aligned with our tens, okay? We're not multiplying by the ones column. That's one difference in what we did yesterday. Yesterday, we didn't have to do that, right? But today, on this lesson, we're having to put a zero in. It's a placeholder. Now we have one times eight, which is eight, and then two times one, which is two. So we end up with 28 times one ten, and that's going to equal 28 tens, or, and then that's going to be 280 ones. Okay, that's just another way to write that because these are all partial products. And I'm going to write that word up here so that you have that. Uh, I haven't seen it used here yet. Oh, here it is right down below. Oh my goodness, I'm a little ahead of myself here. You know, I always was before my time, you know. But yeah, and there's even a really cool area model that you guys are going to learn at some point, which is very helpful. Uh, you probably did it in fourth grade, I'm sure. Now it says add the partial products. So we had 28 times 8, which we know was 224. Uh, I got a sloppy there, my little two there looks funny. And then I have my 28 times 10, 
which was 280. Again, those are ones, though. And then we just add those together. 4, 10, carry that 1 over there into the hundreds place, and we have 4. One more is 5. So it's a 504. Now, on average, a Siberian tiger may eat 504 pounds of food in 28 days. Now, 504, let's take a look up above. Not super close to our 600. So I think to myself, well, 504 is close to 600, but it's not as close as I remember some of our estimates that we made in less than 1.6. But when I look at it closely, I can see that what we did, though, is we did kind of end up rounding up. Our 28 was the actual number. We rounded up to 30. And our 18, we rounded up to 20. So really, both the numbers in the factors, we rounded up so that it would mean that our number might be a little bit higher than it should be. And sure enough, you look at 504, it's less than that, and that would make sense. What do we have over here? Remember. Ooh, remember. Use patterns of zeros to find the product of multiples of 10. 3 times 4 equals 12. Oh, these are little patterns of multiplication. 3 times 40, 120. 3 times 400, we have 1,200. Yeah, this is, we kind of cover this a little bit, looking at the simple facts and then doing that. Kind of what we actually already did. Cool. Let's go on to the next page. Whoa, here we go. Whoa, look at that Siberian tiger. Oh my goodness. It says a Siberian tiger sleeps as much as 18 hours a day or 126 hours per week. About how many hours does a tiger sleep in a year? There are 52 weeks in one year. Oh my goodness, 18 hours a day. 24 hours in a day minus 18 hours that, you know, a Siberian tiger sleeps. Boy, we do the regrouping. Look at that. He's only up for six hours in a day. Amazing, huh? That's a lot of sleep in there, buddy. And I actually heard that's true for lions, too. They sleep quite a bit. Well, step one says we need to estimate. So we're going to take that 126, that was the hours per week, times the 52, which was the weeks in the year. And we're just going to round. Now, we're going to go ahead and round that 126 to 100, which is we actually estimated that down a little bit. And then our 52, we're also going to be rounding down to 50. So our answer then, our actual answer should be, yeah, it should be a little bit larger, one would think, than this estimated answer. So here I do my simple facts, 5 times 1, that's how I do it, easy 5, I have 3 powers of 10, so that's 5,000. So my answer should be, my actual answer should be a little bit under 5,000, okay? And again, that's what an estimate is, a way of just getting an idea what our answer should be. Let's look at step 2. The step 2 says multiply the 1s, Okay, we've done that before. That's 12. Carry that 1. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. And then I'm going to have my 2 times 1, which is 2. So I actually have 252 1s when I multiply the 1s by each one of those place values. Perfect. But now we move into the 10s. That's right. So now we're going to go ahead and let's go ahead and put our 252. And I need to get in that place value because I'm moving into the next column. Now I have 30, carry the 3. I have 5 times 2, which is 10 plus 3, which is 13. Carry the 1. Now I have 5 plus 1, which is 6. So I have 6,300 ones. Okay, so 126 times 5, we did that one up above. Oh no, we 126 times 5 tens, it would equal 630 tens or 6,300 ones. Okay, uh, you have to remember that because this may confuse some students, but because we were in the tens column, but I did put a placeholder in there, okay, that held that for us. But when we read this number, this is 633, 630 tens or 6,300 ones. We can even say it's 63 hundreds. Okay, there's a different way that we rename those units. Now we have add the partial products. Let's go ahead and do that. We had 252. We had 6,300, and it was 2, 5, 5, 6. And our answer is actually larger. Ah, you know what? I was thinking in reverse here. I made a mistake. No, our actual answer should be above this one. Yeah, because we rounded down, we estimated down, then our answer should be larger. And if you recall the one we did on the previous page, the 600, I think it was, and then we had 504. That one we rounded up, so the estimate was larger. Our actual answer was lower. This is the opposite. So that uh, is a correction I'm making right now. We should have, when you round down, that meant our actual answer, okay, you didn't see anything. <laughs> 
our actual answer should be up. And indeed it is, 6,552. Okay, so a Siberian tiger sleeps about 6,552 hours in one year. So mathematical practice six, just to remind ourselves of mathematical practice six, it says attend to precision. So I can use precision when solving problems and communicating my ideas. So we want to do it accurately, efficiently. That's what precision refers to. Okay, cool. Adios. Then I say when you multiply 126 and five tens in step three, why does its product have a zero in the ones place? Explain. So in step three, multiply by the tens, it does say we have 126 times five tens. The key thing here is that it's tens. So if we wanted to keep our digits aligned, that first six times five is 30 is this zero here, and then we carry that three. In order to have that number have the same quantity be equivalent to ones, we need to put that zero in there. See that? So this is 630 tens. In order to make it ones, remember we learned the tens place is 10 times greater than the ones place. Therefore, we'd have to multiply 630 tens by 10 so that we can convert it into the ones. Just like if we did, if we wanted to put the tens into the hundreds place, we would have to say 63 hundreds. Look, we lose a, a zero when we do that. Okay, this is just renaming that quantity in the different place value. It just so happens that whenever you multiply that five in the tens place, you want to make sure you put in that placeholder in here. Okay, and at least that's how I would show that as a partial product. Uh, I mean, unless you put ones here and then you put tens here, you wouldn't know. But these are all representative of ones, and so that's why I put the placeholder in. Okay, I hope that made some sense. Let me go ahead and write that up for you. So I would just say the zero in the ones place. Uh, just lets you know um, that there are 630 tens. And, you know, that's what I would say, but remember, we showed how you can convert that. Okay? Hey, hey, thank you for joining me in another math video. Now, my friend, live long and